Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Um, for today's card I'm using a Lawn Fawn old school stamp called Crit Critters Ever After and I'm also using the tiny uh, fairy tale and I when I was going through my stash I realized that the tiny fairy tale characters fit you know size wise work really really well with the um, with the castle so um, that was kind of a, a lucky <laughs> a lucky find so to start with I'm going to use the edge of a piece of cardstock to stamp my sentiment and I'm going to do two layers I suppose so I've got the may all your dreams come true <laughs> from uh, Critters Ever After and then I'm also going to use one of the stamps from Tiny Fairy Tale. I don't know why I said that so slowly but anyway and I've actually got two of the little sentiments in there and I'm just gonna the nice thing about lawn fawn stamps is that you can butt them up to each other and create long sentiments if you want to um, or you can stack them um, and though the way that the words are are placed or the the characters are placed means that you can do that and the spacing will be correct so that's really really nice <coughs> excuse me so I'm just going to get these stamped I was trying to line them up in one line and then I realized that where I wanted to stamp them um, it would probably overlap so I decided not to with the with the other sentiment so I decided to stamp them separately um, and I'm just using a purple um, ink from Stampin' Up. Um, I believe it's one of the inks that I used um, to create the background, um, which I'm not going to do in the video today, but I just used some watercolour paper and some Stampin' Up inks in colours that kind of coordinated with the colours I'd already um, painted the images. I used some water, it was a watercolour filled um card today <laughs> so i um i'm just taking the the my trimmer here and sort of lining it up and using the guide the plastic guide that's on there to um just create a block for the uh sentiment and then i do the same when i'm going along the side i use the edge of the the actual um, sentiment, the words or the letters, and then line that up. <coughs> Excuse me. Line that up, and then that creates just enough spacing around it. Um, I've been doing that for a long time, so <laughs> it's quite handy. So I have my um, card uh, base, which is just a white card base, and then I used um, Lawn Fawn's stitched rectangles to cut the watercolor piece out. Um, and I'm just trying to get it on here. <laughs> I don't know why it took me forever to get it on here. Um, and that measures as an A2 size card, so five and a half by four and a quarter. And then the cloudy border is actually for the, um, I think it's an inside pop-up card. I think that's what it's called. Um, and it's sort of pieces that you can add in um, to create clouds. So the original one comes as like a stitched hillside and then you get all these add-ons that you can add to it so that's why the, the the one I'm putting on now looks a little bit weird because it's got this funny little thing <laughs> little cutout bit um, and that bit would actually be on the back piece on the inside of the card for the pop-up um, part of it but I wanted it on the outside because I don't have a cloud border so <laughs> I made it work <laughs> and it works really well actually I've done this before on other cards um, and so I'm just keeping the borders, uh, the clouds white. I'm not doing anything to them. I didn't ink them. I didn't put any glitter on them or anything like that. So back to the background, I use some watercolor paper um, for all of these. Um, and I, for the background, I used three Stampin' Up! inks in, um, I think I used Gorgeous Grape granny apple green and I want to say melon mambo but I can't or maybe it was poppy parade I'm not sure but basically I used a red a pink or a, a pinky color a green and a purple and it's I'd I'd actually done those and painted the castle and all the little characters miles apart I didn't even think to use them together until I saw them together I thought they might look kind of cool so this castle's it's a bit different it's up in the sky so 
in the clouds. Um, and when I went to put my little, um, what are they called? My little knights um, at the at the front doors, I realized that they they didn't, the pop dots made them sit too much out. There was just, it didn't work very well. I didn't really like the way it looked. So I changed my mind and I decided to use just, um, just to stick them flat. So actually none of the images are actually gonna be popped up. They're all gonna be stuck down flat. But I just thought this looked quite cute. Um, and definitely not putting the pop dots on or taking them off, the foam um, thingies, that works so much better. It just looks so much better. So I'm just adding in all these little guys all over the place. <laughs> and there are seven frogs, yes. I don't know why I went with seven, but seven was the number for that day, obviously. So I just stamped them. Um, I painted them with, uh, what paint did I use? Hmm, a watercolor paint. <laughs> any color, any kind you got. If you've got ink pads that are, are dye based, you can use them to, as a watercolor as well. Um, I think these might have been my, I want to say these were my Winsor and Newtons, but don't quote me on that. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It's, it's a watercolor. So I used Tim Holtz paper for the um, stamped images and watercolored them in. And then I cut them out with my scan and cut. You guys know that I love that thing. I don't have, I mean, I have some dies that are coordinating dies, but for the most part now I don't have coordinating dies for my stamps. I used my machine instead. Works really well. It even cut out all those hearts, um, which are teeny tiny <laughs> little things, but it did it, it managed it. So I was really pleased because I actually stamped all of them and then um, colored them and then cut them out. Whereas more recently I had been stamping them, cutting them out, then coloring them, but it's actually easier if they're just on one piece to stamp them color them in and then cut them out so yeah I was really pleased it didn't go wrong because <laughs> I spent all that time coloring them in <laughs> so um yeah so in my mind I had I had the colors for the stamped images um and that's kind of where I was thinking the background would go and I wasn't actually sure I was going to use this background with these because I wasn't sure it really worked but I just thought well it's art <laughs> so we're gonna go with it so the other thing I did on the background once I had um, I used a um, blender brushes a blender um, the blender tool the Tim Holtz blender tool and I actually used that to just go diagonally across with the three colors and then I just blended back and forth until it blended enough you can see between the purple and the green it kind of goes a bit brown it gets a bit muddy so um, I just did enough that I was happy with it and then what I did was I spritzed it with some water. Um, you can use a paintbrush to do that. I used a distress sprayer. I'm obsessed with that thing. So I used that, sprayed it, spritzed it on there, and then let it sit for a few seconds and then mopped it up with a paper towel. And then after that, of course, that wasn't enough. I had to <laughs> splatter. Um, so I used, I managed to find, although I need to get probably something more specific, but I managed to find a white paint and a silver, um, it's a, a very old highly swap, um, it's like a, I think it's called tinsel, it's a silver spray, it's like shimmer spray, and I actually used the nozzle and just splattered it on there. I have a separate box for that obviously, <laughs> just splatter, always have a splatter box. And um, I, I think it's just an old Stampin' Up box actually, you could use an Amazon box or whatever box, you know. <laughs> And um, I splattered that on there to get that just a bit of more shimmeriness in the background, that ethereal look. So that's it. It it wasn't obviously colouring and inking and you know doing the background take a little bit of time, but it's fun to put together once you've got all those pieces and they don't have to be done all at the same time. You can do them at different times and then you know chuck them together when you're ready. So I hope you enjoyed this and I will see you in the next one, guys. Bye.